A theory I've talked about a couple times before is the idea that Starkiller Base used to be the planet Ilum from the Clone Wars. I'll link to my previous discussions on that in the cards, but the gist of it is that Starkiller Base and Ilum have been specified as having the exact same diameter, the super weapon's origin point was from the same spot in the galaxy, both are full of crystals, and of course, both of them are snowy. It's one of the few fan theories that I wholeheartedly believe. Well, Star Wars Resistance recently showed us some new information about the development of Starkiller Base that could go against the Ilum theory, so today I'm going to try to run through the timeline of what I think happened and see if it still works. The episode The Core Problem has Kaz and Poe exploring the Tahar system in the unknown regions which they discovered through First Order Intelligence. The sun is missing and several planets can be seen damaged. I initially thought they were hit with, like, a test fire of Starkiller Base, but the Resistance Rewind show on YouTube confirmed that the messed up system was all the result of experiments to create the super weapon. We can see a progression of planets that have been completely broken apart, all the way to one that has a perfect hole drilled all the way through it. Does that mean that Starkiller Base actually originated here? I have to admit that's possible. Maybe the final test was a complete success, and then they sucked up the sun and left. Granted, I'm still trying to hold on to this Ilum theory, but I think it's more likely that this system was just a testing ground. Ilum is a special and unique planet, and reference books have said that its crystalline interior is what made Starkiller Base work at all. I can't imagine there are a ton of planets like that to choose from, so the First Order probably decided they better just pick a system and practice coring them before risking accidentally destroying Ilum. So they picked the Tahar system and got to work. If you haven't been keeping up with Resistance, there was an inhabited planet in the system as well, and the villagers were all slaughtered except for two children who escaped. I've been questioning why they were killed, and beyond just being witnesses to these experiments, I could see the First Order using them as slave labor to help speed things along. Then once they successfully learned how to core a planet, they eliminated all the witnesses. So why is the sun gone? I'm guessing while they were learning how to drill planets, they also figured out how to harness the energy of a star. It makes sense to keep all your experiments in one place. And once they had a working sun vacuum, they could just implement what they had learned on the weapon itself. I imagine that was one of the last things they did because a system without a star would just be chaos. Then again, Star Wars has never been all that concerned with accurate space physics. In The Force Awakens, Hux announces that Starkiller Base is finally ready, and I could see the sun vacuum being like the final installed piece. Kinda like the super laser in the Death Star, it was probably the most difficult technological development the First Order had to figure out. We don't know anything for sure, but I like that Resistance is dropping more information about Starkiller Base and its creation. Although I admit I really want that Ilum theory to be true, so I'm hoping they don't disprove it, but I'm willing to let it go if they do. Anyway, regardless of where Starkiller Base was originally built, it's cool to see that the First Order had to go through a bit of trial and error to get there. But that's all I've got for today. Let me know what you think about the super weapon's development and origins in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.